Hello, Hi. friends of the internet. Welcome to another meeting of the Interstellar Sci-Fi Book Club. We're going to give it a minute for friends to roll in, but we're back with a vengeance because we got things to say. So <laughs> let's just go around and introduce ourselves real quick. As you know, I'm Steph. Hello. There's Jessa. Hi. <laughs> no, it's by now, so we can go no. now. <laughs> Hello, Zach. Hey. <laughs> you'll, you'll know why you're here. Yes, yep. at this point, I hope so. If you're new, welcome. Consider subscribing to all the fabulous people who are in the description and joining the book club and talking about things. But today, I don't have a physical copy, but we are talking about light from uncommon stars. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> by Raika Aoki. So we are going to go non-spoilers for a little bit and then spoilers. But before we do, for anyone who is going to be joining us for March's read, we are reading Project Tail Mary by Andy Weir. Super exciting. And the live show will be the first Sunday in April. So if you still need time to read it, you will have an extra almost a week to pick this up. But we're so excited. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> non spoilery thoughts. Uh, do we want to kind of like give a summary of what the book is about? Can we? Is that Maybe. possible? <laughs> <laughs> who, wants to, who wants to try? <laughs> so, we, there's like three main women that we follow. There's Katrina, who is a young transgender girl who is like ran, around, ran away from home trying to find a new life uh, as her new self. There's Lan, who owns a donut shop, and that's all you need to know because that was amazing. And that just like drew me in right away. And then I know I'm going to mispronounce this name. So let me see. Shizuka, mm -hmm. who needs, who has like, owes like a deal to the devil that needs to find the souls of violin players seven of them she's found six so now she's wrapped into this because katrina also plays the violin mm -hmm. and so they're all kind of like all their like stories like mixed together in this hmm. yes perfect description yes. yay <laughs> good job jessa <laughs> without tell giving tell anything tell away <laughs> Okay, do we want to go around and give ratings? Okay. So, so I gave this go. four stars, actually. Oh, oh, okay. exciting. Okay, Interesting. Exciting. I no? finished this a couple, of, like, ten minutes ago. <laughs> but I think it's a three for me. Okay. Okay, I've, I've paused about 70 pages from the end and I'm thinking about DNFing and at the moment it's sitting at like a two. Um, it took me almost the entire month to listen to the audiobook because I kept pausing and then starting and then pausing. So it would like catch me and then lose me and I'm like, no, I'm trying to come <laughs> back. Um, so I'm sitting at like a 2.5. Yeah. So we have very different opinions, and I love that for us because that means we're gonna have a lot to talk about. Yep. <laughs> I was worried we weren't gonna have stuff to talk about. <laughs> but yay. Okay, so non-spoilery thoughts. Where do we want to start? I was not expecting there to be a donut in this book with lots of donuts. <laughs> I feel like the cover should have had donuts because mm -hmm. that's I to think be the so main too. Theme. Um, Space donuts. The koi fish threw me through a loop because I was waiting for it to come up, and then when it came up, I was like, "It's a very loose connection." Mm -hmm. Donuts would have made more sense. <laughs> I don't. It came up. <laughs> I don't even it remember did. it coming yeah. up for like two seconds. <laughs> okay. Literally, literally, like there's like one line. That's mm -hmm. it. The koi fish. Yeah. Um, I have so many opinions. On yeah, this book. <laughs> oh. excited to hear it. Um, okay, non-spoilery opinion. This is rated. Uh, it's categorized as an adult 
online, but I personally felt that this could have been categorized as YA. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, especially because the way that it was wrapped up at the end had a nice little bow on it. And that's usually something that happens in YA. So I was expecting it to be a little bit more gritty and real. Um, and so because my expectation shifted or it was a lot different from what I was expecting, that kind of affected my rating. Mm -hmm. And I think that's exactly why I also brought it down as well is because while I very much actually did enjoy it, even though things were confusing, it was the ending that like really like it just wasn't for me. <laughs> I think this book was a mess. <laughs> just I was trying to put it genuinely, nicely and Max genuinely. was just like <laughs> Straight up, like, okay. I'm not going to be gentle. I think, no, honestly, I think that, like, when you get stories like this, like, because um, in the front, it compares it to Good Omens, where you have a lot of storylines that are so unrelated to one another and so different in tone. But, like, overall, because of that, the book has a kind of, like, a whimsical, like, quirky, happy feel to it. And this was like that. But, like, there was no, like, whimsy at all. It was, like, dead depressing. Just the whole way through was just, like, ultra depressing. And I feel like the, it didn't match. The mood of the book didn't match what the book was. It was selling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like it would have been so easy to tie those stories into something more cohesive together by making so i was thinking about this and i think there are two possible changes that the author could have made that would have improved this book like tenfold mm. so i don't know how much i can say about spoilers so i'll save that till we're in the spoiler bit because mm -hmm. i think there's like actual okay. changes i think would be a good idea okay but i feel like this book is porn for people who like violins mm. yeah. there are like entire chapters that just describe somebody feeling up a violin Mm -hmm. And I was like, come on, like, <laughs> for, for a book that had like these storylines that it was describing that was so like wild, mm -hmm. nothing happened. Mm -hmm. There was like the whole book, like hardly anything happened. And I was like, there's like demons and aliens and like stuff like that. And I was like, but where's the, the cool stuff? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kind of bitter about this book. I wasted no, it's, time it's, on it. It's totally fine. I like the sections that were most interesting to me were the sections in the donut shop and learning yeah, about too. uh what's the name Lan mm -hmm. and like Lan. learning about the aliens and their culture and stuff. It, I felt like there were two books happening here. Yeah. There was the sci-fi book, then there was the demons, but the way it could it could have potentially come tied together and I was waiting for that tie to come together at the end but then some things happened at the end that just threw more questions my way and I was like why is this there's there was no establishment of any systems which is okay but then there were certain chapters where they gave us this grandiose scientific explanation of all these things that were happening in the aliens mm -hmm. world. It's like, oh, that's really interesting. Okay, so there is going to be some sort of like hard scientific system, but then it didn't happen. So I'm like, where are we? Are we here? Are we not here? What's going on? Oh, nice here. Hi, darling. That's okay. That's okay. We're still in the non-spoiler section and we're trying really hard. <laughs> we're trying hard. We're trying to be nice. <laughs> we, have, we have mixed opinions. We have a four, a three. This is like seriously three, mixed opinions. Three, I'm excited. A two and a 2.5. <laughs> mm -hmm. Should we give content warning? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. wasn't expecting. No. Yes. Major content warnings. Um sexual assault yep violence um what else um emotional abuse yeah self harm self harm suicidal ideation yep mm. um anything else uh, i think that's it uh, yeah 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 yeah. If we're still in non-spoilers, I feel like we can talk about, I feel like I can talk about the fact that I thought the sexual assault stuff was wholly unnecessary. 
when we get into the spoiler section, I will talk about how I agree. I, like, I I get it. I I get it in the sense of like being that it's a story about a trans girl and knowing that trans individuals experience an extremely high rate of sexual assault and violence, it makes sense to have a moment in the story where we talk about that, but the way it was handled felt like it wasn't flushed out. It was just like, this happened, okay, moving on to something else, but that situation had a lot to do with the decisions that Katrina was making, hmm. and so why didn't we go back and unpack the significance yeah. of what that means um yeah so it was like dropping this thing of what these people deal with but then it's never the the like that's it <laughs> we didn't cross yeah. the road we're like oh there's the road okay we're gonna go over here now and i'm like wait yeah. but what about that one <laughs> mm -hmm. hi oh. Hugo. I think that was my problem with this book. I feel like there were so many good like things. There was so much representation and it was like commenting on society and stuff, but it wasn't like fleshed out enough mm. for me. It just kind of like drops a lot of like hints and bombs and stuff, but doesn't really like do more with it. But. So this book made me ask a question. And I was really, I have been thinking about it a lot. It's considering that the, where we are in society at the moment, the world is a very hostile and abusive and not very nice place to a lot of trans and queer people. Is it always the case that for good and realistic rep, you need trauma in a book? That I... Because 99% will put it in to make it relatable to people who have experienced that trauma. Mm -hmm. But like, do you need it every time? That is a fantastic question. And that is actually something that I'm exploring in my personal art thesis. Um, I personally say no. But then again, it being that it is a majoritively the case, it needs to be present. Mm -hmm. But then that brings us to the point of, okay, is solely representation enough is is that like the end goal to solving all of these problems is like look this is happening and it's like okay but what more we yeah. need we need more than that and so in That's... this case with this book it did a lot of like it did a lot of representation of placing these individuals at the forefront of saying look society this is what is happening but then there was no discussion as to what causes that and addressing the systems that allow that to happen. Yeah, definitely. Um, I feel like there's a lot of like, in, in exactly the same breath as that, there's a, in a lot of sci-fi, especially, you don't get, here is a queer person, they have as much value as everybody else. You get, here is a queer person, look how damaged they are, look how messed up they are. And it's it almost like from the stuff that feels like trauma porn, it feels like, a showcase of like unresolved issues rather than a healthy exploration of identity mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, i feel need, like do we need well, it will we need it forever is what i'm we, gonna say we it, I, it's, it's probably the larger question is if if we can never really address and fix those systems then it'll always be a necessity to have mm. that be present mm -hmm. like you we need to have the healthy um, representation as much as we need the traumatic representation to show the differentiation of how these things happen. Um, but I lost my thought. There's more. I'm going to come back because I saw Natalie's <laughs> comment. I was like, wait, I think there's a need for stories of queer joy. We can't just have trauma at the same time. It feels like escapism because, yes, like we, we need, we need to have both, but that doesn't mean that, it's like, I feel like this book was on the level of, um, this is going to be a really bad comparison, like a commercial. Like we have a commercial where I remember there was a while ago where there was a Cheerios commercial that was really um, making the waves in the news because it had a, a multi-ethnic 
family at its at the core of the commercial and it's like mm. look this is representation mm. which is a good thing but now take that commercial and turn it into a movie okay now we need to unpack why it is that having a multi-ethnic family at the front of a commercial is so uh, jarring for so many viewers of this demographic and like where this commercial is played and how that affects statistics how does that affect like the product placement right so like you unpack that in certain ways and this book for me was trying to do too many different things instead of just saying hey look here's an individual who is dealing with trauma let's talk about how that trauma happened but instead i feel like it was a little bit romanticized yeah. um so i don't know yeah. And now that hearing it from you guys, that's not something that like I picked up for when I was reading it because I did really like that they did mention like trauma and everything that goes along because again, like it's been mentioned, it's more realistic. So I think that's why I <laughs> not liked it, obviously. I know I don't want that kind of stuff, but appreciated um, it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I didn't think about it in that way. So just like listening to you guys, it really like it's an interesting way to also look at it from like another perspective because I thought it was just like when I was reading it I was like oh that's really good I'm really glad that they included that because that's what's real mm -hmm. but even like unpacking like and going further than that I agree now it's something that should have been added to mm -hmm. finishing out like that of what all just happened so mm -hmm. right and then so like adding on to that just because I found a lot of parallels in this book as to what I've been thinking about in my artistic practice, but like in researching how individuals, for example, from my own demographic are typically represented, it's usually in a place of trauma and harm. And so at a certain point, I'm like, when do I get to see, when do we get to have a positive uh, connotation to that in order to have the same level of representation can, mm. going back to I think the question that you asked about so like can you have representation without showing the negative outcome that has been or what can be mm. um, so this book kind of like really doubled down on that um, and it tried to put a positive spin at the end but we'll talk about that more in the spoilers because <laughs> I was like, what is happening? <laughs> Why? Donuts. <laughs> I'm trying to think of more non-spoiler bits. No, um, spoilers. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of food mentioned. Oh, there's Not a lot just, of food oh, mentioned. It was. Yeah. I was going to, like, you could do a game that's like, take a shot every time the author writes boba. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 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 Um... Demons and aliens. I, I've i never read where, a book where we had a combination of uh, religious iconography and interaction with space aliens before. This is was a first for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the only other time I've seen that is like Warhammer. <laughs> yeah. This, this, mm, I don't know. I don't know if I liked it. <laughs> I don't know I, if I liked it. Yeah, it didn't work for me. Um, it's just like, here is hell. And then here's space. I was like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. <sighs> so we'll talk about that more in the spoilers, which I know you won't be here for, Natalie, because I felt like... <laughs> I feel like this book tried to do the second of what you said, which is like, it didn't center on the trauma, but it consistently showed that shitty things happened. And then it was just like, okay, the shitty thing happened. We're totally going to ignore it. And like, that's just totally normal. And I'm like, yeah. it's not normal. It's not okay. What that person just did. Like, everyone's just like, Oh, that person did a horrible thing. I'm going to go have coffee. And it's like, no, wait. The bit that was like, that was like, like you're saying, the bit that annoyed me was that these horrible things would happen. And the resolution of that horrible thing happening would be the teacher, Mr. Satomi, just literally being like, oh, yeah, but you know, never mind. Just ignore him. Yeah, I was like, what? And that's it. No. That's it. That's it. No, no. Um, yeah. So there's the, there's there's thoughts. 
but I know I don't know if anyone else looked at reviews online like I feel like there's two sides to the reviewing like the the rep is extremely important and there's definitely not enough of this in sci-fi at all so this being at least from what I've seen the start of having these conversations about queer individuals in sci-fi is really important I just hope that the next if if there's a next book or whatever uh, Raika Oki decides to write in the future that it just goes deeper that's really it do you feel like this is the end was enough to set up for a sequel or do you think it's like done? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Probably. Maybe. Yes. I oh, you can finish it. So yeah. <laughs> to explain the ending to me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it potentially could. Yeah. When you explain the ending, yeah, there definitely could be a sequel. Does there need to be a sequel? Questionable. But... Because they wrapped it up so, like, here it is. Like, you kind of mm. mentioned at the beginning with, like, as a YA, I'm like, it's, it, it, it's one of those ways where it doesn't need to continue on just because of the way I think it wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Okay, should we should we go into spoilers? Do we have yes. any other non-spoilers? Spoilers. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, okay. Okay. So thank you to all our friends who are here for the non-spoilery section. We are now going into spoilers to unpack the other things we were talking about. So thank you for watching. And if you finish, feel free to come back to this video, but we hope you enjoy it. So bye, you guys. See you in the next month. Yes. <laughs> okay. Go. <laughs> so, Wait, what part I, did you get to, Matt? I Which got to the bit on? where um, the Lantran's son had just gone out and, and like, killed those killed kids. Someone. Okay. All right. So that part totally went over my head. All right. So basically what ends up happening in the end, and Mel and Jess, feel free to jump in and correct me if I miss anything, because there was a lot happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. They end up... Did you get to the friendship competition? No. Okay. So <laughs> because Shizuka decides that she doesn't want to sacrifice uh, Katrina um, and is like, screw it. I'll just like, I'll just die. It's whatever. I'll go to hell. Um, Tremone says, I'm going to force you into participating in this competition. I'm going to call you out in public and then you have to go. To Which to me is questionable. Like, did she have to go? Totally not, but whatever. So, <laughs> um, it's like I'm already going to hell. What are you gonna do? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but so they basically, Tremone went online and sent personal invitations to a bunch of famous up and coming violinists. Mm -hmm. And so Katrina got the message and was like, "Oh, now I got accepted to this violin competition," and was being advertised as the trans person. So that was at the forefront of their advertising, um, which is like scandalous in the violin world, right? So go to the competition. Katrina thinks that they took the cursed bow so that they were going to sacrifice themselves in place of Shizuka. But little did they know that Shizuka did a double switcheroo and was like, <gasps> no, you're not going to sacrifice yourself. I'm sacrificing myself. So... Katrina, I don't know if Katrina wins the competition or something, um, but they did really, really well. And the whole point of the competition was that Shizuka thought that they were playing amazingly because of the cursed bow, but it was actually their own innate talent. And so they moved the crowd. And then while they were moving the crowd, we got a whole slew of philosophical questions about life, mm -hmm. um, which I can't even remember. It was a lot of questions. It was like a good five minutes of audio on philosophical questions some of them didn't i don't know i can't explain but <laughs> um so then concert's over and shizuka plays her own music and shimon's like aha i got you and then lan is like no you don't because i'm gonna teleport her to space and we're gonna go away from earth and you demon only have a certain range in which you can draw people to hell so if we that can be <laughs> That was my community. How did yeah. how did Lantran know that though? 
because someone was in the audience so that's the part that i don't know because the forums because on the forums everyone knows that she is actually the queen of hell and following a demon how they know that i don't know right but, like every Len was like i saw the forums i'm gonna help you escape from this demon and we're gonna leave earth's atmosphere and go to another galaxy before he can get you so apparently there's like demons don't have long range like 5g connection so he can't grab her <laughs> but like... yeah but what i'm saying is how did they know that the, that would work oh they didn't i don't oh, know okay <laughs> they were just like we're gonna try this thing we're gonna run away from you okay. until he can't reach you um so then they like teleported to another galaxy or something and he's like ah oh, shucks they got away and then, <laughs> and then... <laughs> And then he ends up, so at back at the donut shop, someone else took over the donut shop. I don't know if it was Shirley or someone. Someone okay. else took it over. Oh, and then Shirley and Lee, um, Lee, Lan's relationship get repaired. And she's like, mom. And Sh and Lan's like, daughter. And they like, love each other. And everything's great. Okay. And then <laughs> um, back at the donut shop, there's a Mexican immigrant mother. I think she was Mexican. Mm -hmm. um who comes into the donut shop asking for work but she's an illegal immigrant so she doesn't have papers so she's worried she won't get the job but she gets the job i don't know why that why that happened but then she's there okay and then <laughs> and then back at the violin shop with the other family that was there, the violin fixer family oh the matias yes the yeah. tremone comes there and tells them the main daughter, I don't remember her name. She's like, I'm going to tell you the story of your family. And he tells her about how it's been generationally that the women have been oppressed in this family as like workers, but not creative people. He's like, I'm going to help you be the next creative person. And then I guess she becomes his next victim. And then that's it. Okay. What's the oh, and, and Katrina's that? living a good life. <laughs> <laughs> was the point of them going to space were they gonna go try and stop the end play or something like that too i, I think so i don't know i don't know because i don't know that anyone could stop the end plague mm -hmm. i but don't know why the end plague resulted in war ever if it was talking about the end plague just being like a like a slow decline of like loss of purpose depression and like collapsing into slow nothingness why why is there a war at all mm -hmm. great question yeah <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know hey, hey. oh good glad glad you got it uh we are currently in the spoiler section so uh -huh. spoiler alert um because we already <laughs> finished talking about non-spoilers but hope you love it we have very mixed opinions here, highs and lows, so feel free to stay. <laughs> but... I think there was a... Oh, wait, so yeah, let me talk about the, the things I would change about okay. this book. So I yeah. feel like the the alien bit and the demon bit didn't cohesively fit together at all. No. But mm -mm. if you had made Tremon somebody who was part of the war, another agent of the other side, and was involved in the war, that would have worked. Or if you made the people in the donut shop demons, that also would have thematically yeah. worked. Mm -hmm. If you'd have like flipped either of them, it would have fitted, and I think it would have been a cohesive story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's just like no. So hell exists. There's a demon stealing souls. Believe everything you read on the forums, and aliens <laughs> run donut shops. <laughs> yeah that's it yeah oh good glad you don't mind spoilers <laughs> i feel like there was this weird i feel like i could almost sense like a parallel between so uh katrina's storyline was like um bring bring to the forefront who you are like mm -hmm. the person you are inside like bring that out and be proud of it like don't be somebody that hides himself away and stuff like that and then with the aliens, it was like, hide yourself away. Like, <laughs> like don't be yourself. Yeah. You're in another place. You better fit in. But but then how easily they found out that they were aliens. I don't even remember how it oh happened. Oh, my God. Someone right. So like... the first time they went for they went to, see, to feed the ducks <laughs> together, like, she mishears something. And then Lantran's like, how did you know I'm an alien from space fleeing from an intergalactic <laughs> right? war? Oh, <laughs> right. <laughs> 
<laughs> and then and then um uh, shizuka is like don't worry i believe you because i have a pact with a demon i'm selling people souls to hell <laughs> i was like come on oh come on God. guys i was oh. so yeah i read i was that like okay the <laughs> i think i don't know i kind of liked it i thought it was i just I, it was funny to me so maybe that's why i also like this like was, i don't know some of the stuff like that that's just like so outlandish and i'm like i don't know i like it 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 can it can be either really cozy or it could just be like <laughs> I, that was me i was like what <laughs> So, which I think goes back to what we were saying, Vading, like looking at reviews online, I saw two categories of reviewers, either people who were like, this was so sweet and cozy and I loved it. Or other people were like, what? <laughs> but I guess I'm just like in that opposite one where I don't know. I thought like that interaction, that was funny to me. I don't know why. Maybe it's just there's a little dry humor in the book and I love dry humor. Like that's like my thing. And I don't know. <laughs> it's fine. It's totally fine. But I feel like if I feel like that would have totally worked if the whole rest of the book had matched that humorous yes. tone. Yes. Then yeah. I would have been like, oh, that was a funny scene. But, but then it just it's like went dark. depressing. And then it was like, <laughs> wah, 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 yeah. like one funny bit. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. There was a lot of unpacking. Um I feel like there were there were four different stories happening here, and none of them were flushed out enough for me. Like we yeah. had the the violin making family. We had the donut shop, aliens, we had Chizuka and Astrid and them, and then we had Katrina. And it's like, I want, I wanted the author to just pick two and flush those two, but we got, mm. we got so much. Um, we did. How long is this book? It's like uh, nearly 400 pages, I think. Okay. It is 372. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, no, wait, that's mm -hmm. with the acknowledgements. Hang on. It is 364. Okay. I yeah, especially with the donut shop family, I really love them. Mm -hmm. But then the whole like the sun shooting people, I was like, what is what is the point of this? What's he, happening? Look, especially because he went out and shot somebody because he took offense to the word dyke being used, and it's like you're an alien. Why do you care? Mm -hmm. And he he wasn't and he wasn't one of those characters who was actively trying to like correct social misunderstandings up until that point. So it felt kind of out of character. Yeah, he was like the yeah. answer is aggression. Yeah, I feel um, like the only point he was in the book was when he was angry, and I was like, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. who you are. <laughs> right. Um, and then it's okay. Can we talk about? the sexual harassment and like the different instances in which it would happened and was handled and wasn't handled like i thought it was potentially interesting that katrina was doing sex work as a means of how they are choosing to support themselves and like if that's a decision that they've made support that decision do what you believe is best for you and they actually verbalized that they enjoyed doing that kind of work mm. i think at one point unless i misunderstood that but that doesn't mean that it's okay for someone to be sexually assaulted because those are two totally different things so then later in the friendship competition when the director or someone who tremone works with the, like the head honcho of the whole orchestra thing was going around meeting everyone and they just walk up to Katrina and just gr grab them, like grope them. And Katrina's like, okay, like doesn't at a certain point, like doesn't, no one acknowledges that like, that's totally wrong. And it's like, okay, should, is it then a situation of Katrina is so numb to the idea of being sexually assaulted that they decide mm. not to say anything and if that is the case then why is it not addressed like i think there's something important there in saying that everyone who saw it happen nobody said anything but by this point in the book katrina has gone through so much horror so many horrible things have happened to katrina when is when is someone going to say anything and if it was trying to make a point of like it's in it's normal in life that no one says anything no one speaks up 
But again, we didn't have that conversation. I think that moment should have come much earlier in the book. And much earlier, right? It happened so late. It's like, okay, things are still unresolved and bad things are still happening, but we're not yeah. talking about why it's normalized. Yeah, um, it felt like the message of the book was like, you can be as good as you want. You can be like the best person in the world in your career choice, but it doesn't matter because people still suck. The yeah. end. Ta-da! Um, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, from a creative standpoint and then the whole scene of like Katrina winning over everyone and having to prove themselves with their music it, that part in, its, in itself read YA to me mm -hmm. like in a YA book I could see like at the end of a like, at the end of the story for this happened a bunch of times like they stand up they they do their artistic creative and everyone's like we were wrong to judge you person we love you and it's like okay but this is an adult book I want I and there's a dance number at the end as well a there's a dance number Wait, <laughs> you know, like, oh, you're the... like in movies where there's like a random dance number at the end uh -huh. <laughs> I feel like that's what I was expecting like like Greece or something yeah <laughs> or West Side Story <laughs> um. Yeah, I just yeah. I don't know. Again, I think it's just because in the way that I viewed it as without like and hearing you guys say like, oh, we should have discussed it more. I again, not that I like this thing, but also like it just seems more realistic that like, you know, everyone surrounding you, um, there's going to be a, there's like that huge bystander effect and no one's going to do anything. I know mm -hmm. recently in Philadelphia, because that's the city I'm closest to, um, or recently it was a few months ago that there was a woman who was getting sexually assaulted on the on like the train on the subway mm -hmm. um and like full subway it's not like it's empty or anything and people are just taking videos of it oh i believe it no one did anything no one said anything and so maybe it's just also me having a more negative point of view i always try to be optimistic but i also know the realities of sometimes you know there's just not no one does anything because mm -hmm. there's a bystander effect and i know I've been a victim of not, or not a victim of, but like I've been that person that sometimes thinks other people are going to do things because I feel as though I can't do anything about it. Um, but I don't know. It just, I liked it because it seemed more realistic to me. And that's why, like, I didn't even think about like repercussions or discussing it afterwards because I'm like, sometimes that's just things that happen. So mm. right. that's how right. I viewed it as too. So no, I totally get that, which is why I feel like I would I personally would have accepted it more if it happened in the beginning of the book. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like like yeah. we're establishing the bystander effect. Yeah. And I feel like it was established quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Um but then that was in like the last right last 10 percent i was like we're still not talking about yeah, it. Like, should we not try and end on a semi-hopeful note? Right. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then what's up with Shizuka not wanting to be associated with technology and the internet? Oh my God, that was so annoying. <laughs> what is a Wi-Fi? <laughs> um, yeah, like I want immortality, but technology, no. <laughs> like yeah. I was like, isn't yeah. she trying to be worldwide famous? Was was it just with her making the pact? It, I don't think it was for immortality. Was it just because of her hands? Was that literally it? If that was the case, I was I'm lost. I don't know. Because <laughs> she said that she made the the deal when like her hands stopped working and she couldn't play the violin and like mm -hmm. her parents were mad at her. Is has she literally just been doing this for forty nine years so she can play the violin again? I don't Maybe. know. I was, I was I really was confused thinking. about why she had the deal at all. I don't know. I read that chapter and it went right over my head. Yeah. Yeah. Because I feel like a lot of the deals <laughs> that Shizuka made were to like, because they thought the person had like a flaw in themselves. Mm. So I feel like that was her flaw and she wanted to like be able to play violin again. Mm. I feel like there was an episode of Futurama about that. Didn't Fry make it? Oh, with Fry the and the Devil Fingers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Devil Fingers to like play the flute or something. Um <laughs> Yeah, I don't I don't know. 
Can we talk about the the formatting and the weird POV switches? I feel like how was it formatted in the physical book? Badly. (laughs) So like there were so many just random page breaks. Mm -hmm. Like so it'd be like paragraph, 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 page break, paragraph, paragraph, page break, paragraph, page break. Like for no reason. Like somebody would say something, then there'd be a page break, and then the response. But like later, it, that mm-hmm. wouldn't happen for the same reason. I feel like it was really, really, really weird formatting. And then you'd have like three or four POVs in the same chapter, but like mm-hmm. set in completely different locations. Like it would just jump around like that. It was really hard to follow. I found it hard to follow anyway. Yeah, I did see in the audiobook. That's why I, I re-listened to because I listened to it on audio too. So I I was constantly re-listening to chapters. Like, wait, mm-hmm. when did that switch happen? I yeah. totally missed it. Like, no idea. It would work if they had like three or four different narrators. That would, that would probably yeah. fix that would make it. sense. But that would make sense. Um, on a positive thing about it, though, like I I feel like this book did do this book did do something that we desperately needed in order to help um, ind- trans individuals feel seen because there were a lot of moments in this book where I was like, this this needs to be written for someone who needs to see this. Like it has to, yeah. it has to happen. Um, it needs I feel to like be the right person confident. would love this. Yes, yes. The right person would totally love this. If you're not into hard sci-fi and you like just like, if you if you're looking for trans representation and stories of like found family and those kinds of things, chances are you're totally gonna love this. Um, mm-hmm. yes. So we are just picking it apart. <laughs> just being mean. We're just... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I have, I tried to write notes. Let me see what notes I got. Oh, why did Astrid not know what a dragon was? When did that happen? So she's like talking about a scene she watched from a video game, and she's like, "Oh, the character is fighting some kind of large dinosaur," and then Shizuka is like, "It's a dragon." <laughs> oh, <laughs> that went over my head. <laughs> um. Oh, there was a <clears throat> there was this particular. So this was in the friendship uh, competition thing where they. There was um, East Asian representation, I think a lot throughout this book, but more specifically, I'm referring to the section during this competition. So they were in this kind of classical, um, a classical opera house, which has a lot of like Roman and Renaissance typically inspired imagery, painting, sculpture, and those kinds of things, right? But in this case, those things were replaced with images and icons from Eastern Asian uh, cultures. Mm. So while while I think that was an important scene to note, and I see what it was trying to do in a positive way, I think there's something deeper to be said there about... it. To me, it would mean more if it's like, okay, instead of the statue of David, I am putting this statue of someone from an underrepresented culture but rather talking about why it needs to be in the form of a statue and is a statue even actually representative of the original culture of what it's taking or is it just like creating this new facade in which we are replacing an already established system with images rather than questioning the system itself which I think goes back to what I was saying, which is like, I feel like this entire book was just talking up to me was surface level in the form of replacing imagery and bringing image to the forefront, but not addressing the reason why we allow these things to happen. <laughs> Does that make sense? I love having someone with an art degree in this chat. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm trying. I was like, okay, cool. I see it. But again, not deeper give me more <laughs> i think this, yeah. that happened a lot in this book there was so many instances where i was like i can see what you are trying to do mm-hmm. but you are not doing it mm, not mm-hmm. enough. enough yeah <laughs> yeah even with like shizuka's hand and why she took like the deal i feel like 
like losing something some part like not being able to do something that you love due Mm -hmm. to your own body is such like it's like wow but it doesn't really like touch upon that in this book yeah we just go over like oh yeah she took the deal with the demon and that's it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know what this the ending made me think of did anyone read fountainhead by ayn rand no, I've only read Alice Shrugged by Emma. Uh, okay, because I uh, Fountainhead is about uh, creative expression and like, if you if you're into art, you like um, Fountainhead because it's about whether the art can speak for itself or hmm. whether the importance of the art is dependent on the speaker. And in this case, because of the ending, because of Katrina winning everyone over and accepting her because of her music. It was more about, to me, like, I'm providing you a service for you to accept me. Are you really are you really accepting me for me? Or really, are you only accepting me because I've done something for you? Um, yeah. So, like, can a, can a creative aspect of a relationship really establish whether that relationship is a relationship or is it still, like, a, a part of negotiation? Yeah. Um, and again, I would have wanted, I just wanted more. I wanted more. Like, okay. There, we did get a little bit more because we did see at the end, like, I think from the violin shop, a lot of young kids and teenagers who, because of what Katrina represented, made people feel comfortable and interested in violin and like wanting to come into uh, music and be more creative and especially express their identity, which is a positive thing. So I guess that does something. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wonder, but with it all feeling so separate, I do wonder if the author had ideas for separate stories and decided to combine them. Because mm. I feel like that's, it felt like that to me. Potentially. This could have been two stories. I'm still questioning whether I ever want to have demons and aliens together in another story again. I don't know. This is a whole new sci-fi (laughs) sub-genre. We need to dip into this and figure out more. Um, Was anyone expecting angels to make a show at some point? What? (laughs) I don't know, because I was just like... When did this is this near the end? Huh? No, they didn't. They didn't. But it was like because Tremon said something, I guess, towards the end or something, where he mentions he references that like angels are a thing, or like there's an opposing side that hasn't made an appearance. Um mm-hmm. so I was like, okay, so I don't so I don't get it. Like, like why? Why? Um, I don't know. Oh, actually, speaking of sci-fi and demons, um, it does happen in Gideon. Does it? It does happen in Gideon, mm. and it's done very well in Gideon. <laughs> okay, good to know. <laughs> I didn't finish. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say. I wrote aliens can count and de- can counter demons question mark demons can't reach in space question mark do they have domains question mark I don't know <laughs> um, yeah I was like if every planet had demons would all the demons have a conference like an interstellar conference <gasps> with that's each a great other <laughs> No. You'd be like the the Satan of Earth Hell, and they're like the Satan of Mars Hell. Yeah. Oh my God! Be imagine. So okay. interesting. I just had such a good idea for a story, right? What if somebody <laughs> is like the first person to die on Mars, and they get to heaven, and it's empty because nobody's there yet? Oh my God! <laughs> oh, that sounds so interesting. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, welcome. You are the first one. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be amazing. <laughs> Nobody steal that. <laughs> <laughs> We're copywriting these ideas. <laughs> Copyright. Bam. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. There were a lot of references to sci-fi pop culture, I think, at certain points. And video game stuff mm -hmm. as well. Oh, a lot of anime video game stuff. Yeah. Um, that, oh, I, again, I feel like that is another conversation that I would have, <clears throat> that could have been an entire book in and of itself, which is like, you have a character who is not only underrepresented themselves, but is taking pop culture that is considered like low art and turning it into high art. And they, mm. they referenced, what's her name? Um, Sterling? Lindsay the very Sterling. popular, Lindsay Sterling, I think they referenced at one point um, to talk about how some individuals are already doing work like this. But... It, the criteria for that again was not discussed it's like i'm just gonna show up i'm gonna play this amazing thing everyone's gonna know that it's from like an anime or video game and no one's going to accept it like in my experience in working in art competitions that te technically would not fly in the sense of like you don't present work that is so derivative that when when can you actually judge on originality? So like that would that would just be an automatic disqualification. Yeah. But but I guess they went around that because it was a friendship competition. It wasn't like <laughs> there was no established criteria um, other than I guess who got the biggest round of applause. I don't know. So I was like, okay. Do so they have like an applause meter to like measure the class? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know unless I understood that wrong. Um, I don't know. Or maybe it wasn't even like there wasn't even an award, was there? I think it was just like a show. Was it a showcase? I think it was like a like a oh, a variety show kind of thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, because I thought Tremon was just trying to get um to applause for Katrina so that he could take her to hell. Mm -hmm. Is what I was thinking. Like, okay. Uh, so then, why did Shizuka do it? I want to see that contract. <laughs> want to see that hell contract? Uh, um, I don't know. I don't know. Um, and then, what's with people believing everything that they're reading on forums? Because nobody on the internet would ever lie, Steph, didn't you? Know <laughs> yeah, maybe the aliens haven't figured out that people lie on the internet. <laughs> Just like, there oh was so much information. It's so good. Oh my god. Oh my god. But Did we have such know? primitive technology, so <laughs> you would think that they would know. No. <laughs> know. Oh, and why was why was Shirley upset about getting replicated and having another Shirley? I think Shirley didn't want to leave. Oh, because yeah. So bad. They were just making another Shirley though. They were just yeah. duplicating her. No, I thought they were going to kill her. Oh, I thought they were just like duplicating her and sending one off on the ship. No, I think, I think, unless I misunderstood, I think they were going to duplicate her because there was some sort of error or, or they didn't, something about her wasn't doing what Lan wanted. And right. so she was like, you're dysfunctional. I'm just going to duplicate your like default settings, start a new Shirley, and then put you out of commission and Shirley's like but mom and then, <laughs> I was like oh no <laughs> like that in itself it could have been like really interesting um yeah. yeah yeah I think it was I think they did mention they were like okay we'll send Shirley out to space to bring Marcus back mm -hmm. and then Shirley was like no I don't want that and then Lam was like you have a default in you defective problem and then mm -hmm. like just gonna delete her after Hmm. Um, Shirley is was Shirley like a hologram or did Shirley have a bot like a physical I think they were like material? it was a hologram but with the hologram stuff that they gave to Katrina they were talking about how the holograms actually do feel physical as well because like Katrina could feel mm. the physical changes to themselves as they did the the illusion stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Like that. And then Shirley was able to teleport hologram themselves into different places where there wasn't technology, like Shizuka's house. Um, yeah. Oh, that, oh, actually, there was because they had the Wi Fi box there, didn't they? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That's true. I forgot about that until right now. Yeah. I kind of wanted more about what planet they came from. I wanted to see what they actually looked like. Yeah. Did they mention they were like purple or something like that? They're plum colored and they have extra <laughs> knees, and that's the only <laughs> thing that we heard. <laughs> uh, um, this was creative, though. Don't I love how like good. they have, they clearly have such low tolerance for difference because they they told them they told Chizuka they were plum colored, and I feel like the reaction they were expecting was like. <laughs> <laughs> Like, oh my god. Speaking of what, okay, speaking of what, the way that people look. So, Shizuka, by the end of the book, we find out is in her 80s, I think. But yeah, this like whole time has looked younger because of the immortality. Oh, I did not. Okay. And no one questioned it the entire time. Everyone's just like, yeah, on the forums, yeah, the queen of hell will live forever because she's got this pact with the devil. And there's videos of her being fame. A, a world famous violinist from like 40 years ago and she's still around being famous and no one has said everyone's just like oh yeah she looks great <laughs> like, you would think some government agency would like to not something <laughs> that's her the government's probably in with Tremont don't know okay I don't know if I have any more thoughts, but if anyone has any other thoughts. No, no I'm looking through my it. notes, I'm good too. Yeah. Cool. Um, I'm excited for a change of scene. Yes. <laughs> I want to eat donuts now. Donuts. I know. Yes, yes, yes. This so, made me crave food. <laughs> nice. Definitely. Oh, there was that that one. I don't know if it was like a duck. Oh, also, please don't feed ducks bread. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Feed them, feed them yeah. peas. They love peas. Yes. Don't feed them bread. There was a lot of duck feeding and duck eating. Um, but don't feed them bread. <laughs> Maybe the author just hates ducks. <laughs> <laughs> the ducks are the real demons. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, Tramon was a toad or something. Right? Oh, I think he was just like a like a toady looking guy. Oh. <laughs> Not only does he act like a creep, he looks like a creep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so any last thoughts? Anything? No. I think we're done. Okay. Yay. So those are our thoughts about light from uncommon stars. I hope that you all enjoy it and if your opinions are similar or different to any of ours please feel free to drop them in the comments below don't take our word for it go read it yourself have thoughts and then next month well technically this month because this live show was late for march we're reading project Hail mary and the live show will be the first sunday in april so woo -woo -woo. okay i think that's really it thanks everybody for coming have a good day. Yeah, see you later. <laughs>